Hello, everybody. This is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries. I just want to take this time right now to thank all of our listeners from around the world. Truly, you are a great blessing in my life. And there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about you guys. You see, people of God, I am constantly praying for your well-being because I believe, I believe that the Lord wants the best for you. He wants for you to excel, to become the man and woman he created you to be. And the Lord has given me this assignment to minister his message of hope to compel his people to understand and realize that what you do for Christ will last. You see, I'm reminded of a passage of scripture that really resonates concerning the love that God has for his people. And it's found in the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. It is known as the Ironic blessing, and this is a benediction prayer. This is often used either in a song or spoken usually at the end of a service. And I believe it's appropriate for today or tonight. The scripture says, the Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord make his face shine on you. And be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face to you and grant you peace. That's the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. You see, to be blessed by God, I want you to think about this. To be blessed by God is to be strengthened by God. To be blessed by God is to discover His purpose for your life. To be blessed by God is to receive the fullness of God. And then he goes on to say, protect or to be protected by the Lord. Second Thessalonians, the third chapter and the third verse tells us the Lord is faithful And he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. Psalms 46 and 1 says, God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. And his focus on protecting his people should bring a confidence to our lives that no matter what the enemy tries to do, Against your purpose, we serve a God who looks out for our well-being because he understands what we are up against in this corrupt world. He blesses, he protects, and then he goes on to say, his face shines on us. Think about that, people of God. The Lord takes us into his presence to see his love for us. So if you really look real closely, you can see God smile. (laughs) It's like a father looking at his children and it brings a warmth to the soul. It provides a peace that surpasses all understanding. It's the reality that we are surrounded by God's love. I mean, even when we fall short, yes, even when we fall short, fall victim, even when we stray away from his truth, even when we decide to turn our backs to him, he, Jehovah God, he allows us chance after chance, after chance to to make it right with him because his face shines on us. He lights our spirit. He renews our mind. 
And lastly, he grants to us his peace. You see, Jesus declares in St. John chapter 16, verse 33, where he reassures us by telling us, I have told you these things so that in me, you may have peace. But in this world, you will have trouble. (laughs) But take heart. I have overcome the world. In Psalms 119, verse 165 declares, Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. What we have is a God who understands what we need in order to live a full and meaningful life. So people of God, it is my privilege (laughs) once again to share with you a message that I believe will give you the, the blueprint on being successful in life. So with that being said, I wanted to share with you what the Lord impressed upon me. The need to talk about a subject that's really needed in our society. It used to be the very fabric of our society. 40 40 to 50 years ago, this used to be the norm, believe it or not. Whether we did this thing in the morning or late at night, families all around the world used to come together and pray as a family. People of God, there was prayer going on. The next generation learned from this key attribute in order to have a peaceful and a balanced life. There was unity being displayed in the family. Even when you had disagreements, (laughs) when you had some drama in your family or tension, with family relationships, prayer would often open the door for healing to take place. You see, people of God, it is hard. Trust me, it is hard to pray when you're mad. (laughs) I've been there before. The Lord would usually come in and bring peace to the household. And the Lord is saying today or tonight that we have to get back to the basics, back to the fundamentals, back to the core of who we are. You see, people of God, prayer is not just for special occasions where we say grace on Thanksgiving or Christmas. Prayer should never be used as a last resort or out of desperation. Prayer is a line of communication that moves the mountains that stand in your way. And for your family to rely on God in every aspect of your life, prayer should be the very core of the world. And so today or tonight's episode is one where we can be empowered through prayer, to believe that the best is calling on, calling on us to overcome any obstacle that stands in our way. And so today or tonight's episode is entitled, A Family That Prays Together. I want to say that one more time. A family, a family that prays together. Let's take a commercial break and we'll be right back with the episode entitled A Family That Prays Together. Hello, hello. My name is Christopher. I'm the editor of Full of Life Ministries San Diego podcast. And first of all, I'd like to say thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate it. But I would also like to say that if you would like any prayer, any words of encouragement, or would just like to reach out in any way, you can email us at fulloflifesd at gmail.com. Also, we have a Twitter account. Our handle is at fulloflifesd. And feel free to reach out. We would love to hear from you. And lastly, I would like to say if you like what you're hearing and would like to donate, 
You can donate on any one of our pages. If you go to any of our pages, Spotify, Google, Spreaker, any of that, there should be a link that allows you to do so if that interests you. That's all for me. So thank you guys for listening and enjoy the rest of the podcast. All right, we are back. And so let's get into today or tonight's episode entitled A Family That Prays Together. What has been discovered is intimacy. Intimacy with God is a learned behavior through prayer. When the Bible tells us in Proverbs 22nd chapter in the 6th verse, it tells us train up a child in the way they should go. Even when he or she is old, they will not depart from it. You see, people of God, I want you guys to really understand that prayer clears your mind and establishes a foundation that's centered around your relationship with God. So when a family prays together, when the family turns off the television set, when the family makes an appointment a certain time throughout the week, whether it's a Sunday night, whether it's a Wednesday night, whatever that time slot has been allotted for prayer, this type of effort creates an opportunity for the family to experience his love and presence in our daily lives. When a family prays together, I want you guys to think about this. When a family comes together in unity and in strength, it also demonstrates the importance of faith. Faith is critical for every person in the world. Hebrews, the 11th chapter in the first verse tells us, it says, faith is the reality of what we hope for. The proof of what we don't see. A family that prays together also shows a level of humbleness that is necessary for you to receive from the Lord. Humbleness. Yes, humility is something that's necessary for this culture and time that we're living in. This is the year of 2021. And we can see how many of us have strayed away from that thing called humility. Humility really shines amongst those who are self-centered, selfish, greedy, whose desire is simply to fill their ego. But when you pray, especially as a family, That level of humbleness is critical, necessary for you to really see the floodgates of heaven pouring out blessings upon you. You see, James chapter 4, verse 6, it tells us, but he, referring to God, gives us more grace. This is why it says God stands against the proud, but favors the humble. If you skip down to verse 10, it says, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. You see people that God when a family prays together. It establishes in the heart of of the family that God can be trusted to guide us through every single situation we encounter in life. Because this can lead to some important and deeply meaningful discussions about spiritual things. Think about the times where you sat around together after prayer and began to open up to become transparent with your family members about certain aspects of your life. Because through prayer, it channels 
a spiritual connection with one another, where the dialogue between one another becomes meaningful, purposeful. The dialogue now is really being able to hear the person's needs, to be able to know what to pray for in the present and in the future. You see, when a family prays together, it allows for you to hear the needs of another, to hear a need compels you to intercede on the behalf of another person who needs, who really needs your prayers. You see, James, the fifth chapter and the 16th verse tells us, confess, confess, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous person is powerful in what can be achieved. So people of God, I want you guys to really focus in on this word, a family that prays together. Because when a family prays together, it creates opportunities to express mutual love for one another. You know, love is what we need in this world. Somebody penned a song that says what the world needs now is love, sweet love. We have to understand love for one another, forgiveness of one another, and to demonstrate grace to your family is a powerful thing that you should have within the family. And now it becomes a part of your life. When you have to go to work, when you have to go to the grocery store, when you have to interact with other people in society, that base of prayer through the family gives that strength that's needed for you to function throughout the world. You see, family prayers don't have to be long, drawn out, traditional prayers. You see, when you decide to come together, I want to encourage you to offer up short, spontaneous, conversational prayers where now the genuineness of the prayer hits the ears of God. And God creates the mood for conversation. Make the time together. Make that special time together about building not just a relationship with one another, but building a relationship with Jesus through prayer. You see, remember this, people of God, showing honor to the Lord by thanking the Lord throughout your prayer time is a great way to teach your children about showing respect and honor to the Lord. Do everything you can to help your children fall in love with Jesus. Make sure that you uh, cultivate an awareness of God's presence in the details of everyday life. So listen, people of God, I wanted to be brief tonight because the Lord really wanted you to think about your prayer time. Not just your individual prayer time, but your prayer time with your family. Now, maybe you have family members that are not considered, you know, biological family. Whoever it may be, that connection that you should have within the family should create something that you cannot tangibly see but you feel within your heart and your soul and your mind that the presence of God is with you. And being in the presence of God is the fullness of joy. So listen, in closing, it has been proven. Statistics show that families that make a concerted effort to pray together are more well-rounded, contented, have more endurance, more discipline, 
and more confidence because the power of prayer is activated. The power of God through prayer is something that can never be defeated. So let's get back to the basics. Let's create a loan that's that we need to pray. We need to seek God's face as a family. And let's start today or tonight to create the atmosphere within the family to experience God like never before because now our communication as a family is united and it's powerful and cuts through all of the things that were tried to bring division and separation and pain and sorrow. Prayer changes things. And just think about this, people of God. All throughout the world, if we lifted up God, if we prayed to God, if we sought God's face, we can actually watch God bring healing and reconciliation and hope to the world. But you have to make the effort. You have to do your part. You have to put it into the atmosphere. Maybe it won't happen right away. But your trust in God and the effort that you make in creating a new way of living, a new standard, where now prayer is the focus. And I want to encourage all of our listeners from around the world. Talk to your family. Talk to them about maybe setting aside time to just pray. Now, I understand most people are not so comfortable praying out loud. However you start, it's necessary to start. Because God is calling you to pray. And he's calling families from all over the world to make the effort to pray together. Because a family that prays together stays together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all your many blessings. We thank you for your love, your kindness, your tender mercies. We thank you for hearing us when we have moments where we feel all alone. And so, Lord, we receive your message that we need to make prayer time a top priority. We know that we have drifted. We've allowed different things to distract us from simply praying to you, talking to you, telling you all about our troubles our concerns, our fears, our anxious moments. Lord God, I pray for every family from around the world that they will embrace this message of hope that will bring families together, that will create unity within the family. So Lord God, I pray for those right now who have a desire to talk to their family members about praying together. And Lord God, I pray that they won't have any kind of fear going to these family members because it's a different dialogue. It's not about television. It's not about the social media. It's not about any kind of political preference. It's about coming together and seeking your face. So Lord God, in the name of Jesus, give the people who are listening to this episode right now Give them that boldness to go to the brothers and their sisters and the mothers and their fathers and the grandmothers and their cousins, whoever it may be. I want you, God, to reach out to them and give them that bold faith to believe the impossible. God, help us this day. Help us to grow and help us to to stop wasting time trying different vehicles to try to create peace. Only you can create peace because the family now is praying together. We ask all these blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen and amen. Well, people of God, that is it for today or tonight. The episode entitled A Family That Prays Together. I am Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries. I am so glad that you tuned in, that you took out a few minutes out of your day or your night to listen to this message of hope. I want to encourage everyone here who's listening to this podcast that they will just allow God's word to minister to their needs. Allow God to just help you along your journey. Listen, if there's anything we can do to help you along your Christian journey, don't hesitate to email us at fulloflifesd at gmail.com. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You can find us on any of those platforms. And listen, we love you with the love of Christ. Please pray for us because we are trying to help the world see God through the lens of the podcast. (laughs) So people of God, we love you with the love of Christ. Thanks for tuning in and we will see you on the next episode. People of God, let's continue to do this in Jesus name. God bless.